true unicorn. Perhaps an apple will work. Or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister, were you still a virgin. Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, or you'll spook the beast. We shall try the sweets. Hey, folks. Gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? Flagrant cheating is what it is! Sirs, we must teach this scamp some proper sportsmanship. Hands off, a man's life is at stake. A bold-faced lie! Let's show the scoundrel the true meaning of valor. Let's dance. Defend yourself, rogue! Demand satisfaction. Fuck off. No time. Gardens are huge. Be better off on the horseback. Golden fish should be easy to spot once I'm under. Did someone just dive in the water? <laughs> hey, wait. Stop. It's important. King Cormorant, sire, accept this offering we bring. Prithee cast upon us your merciful eye and bear before us its secrets. As the moon is heavenly course doth trace, in my domain I await that moment of grace when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. Why, on what stretch? He's ruined the game! Disgraceful! If you please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. All shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. Geralt! At last. Got a key and a clue. And I've another. Show me yours. Who wrote this drivel? I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. Let's see. Groan. With ease gives us green, right? Mouse with a head of hard cheese. Greenhouse? You're a genius. 
Several greenhouses in the gardens, indeed, but only one. The key to which looks just like the one we found. Greenhouse it is then. Let's go. I'm here. This belonged to you, maybe? It did, but you may keep it. I've a new one. I do not know you. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxa who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? You've killed four innocent people, at least. And you? How many innocents have you cut down? I don't kill innocents. Murderers, though, you bet. I'll soon be done. I've but one left. And you, should you not stand down? And once you're done, intend to leave? Go kill somewhere else? No. I intend to live. <sighs> Happily ever after. to stay where you are. Regenerate! I know you're in trouble. I can help. I'll help myself! No. He's my friend. Yes, Geralt. It's me. Regis? I... You all right? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... 
I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peak form, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. I'm sorry. What happened? It was my fault. Never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that expedition. No one twisted my arm. Miraculous regeneration. How do you manage it? I had help. From the one you hunt. Him? How? And what have you been doing all these years? Not the time nor place for such stories. I suspect we'll get a chance to speak at ease and at length later. Now, however, we must deal with the reason that brought us both here. So you being here, it's no coincidence? Your powers of deduction seem to have waned not one bit. I'm happy. I came here for Detlaf. I fear he's become entangled. Landed himself in serious trouble. So that's his name. He's your friend? You might call it that. Though Detlaf is... How would you humans put it? More bestial than I am. But not to worry. I'm working on him. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one knight since I got here. At least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand. Detlaf is not some decadent shit who kills for sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. Seem pretty damn sure of that. I am, because I know him very well. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You've both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to perform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to, of course. Remember the year 964? That was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria, and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. Brute of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost two hundred, then fell to a common poacher supposedly armed with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlaf, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, a legend was born. Huh. Vampires rarely help humans. Must have had his own agenda, hunting the beast. You err. He slew it for one reason alone. The monster killed a lad who once in the street had offered Detlaf an apple, expecting nothing in return. Terribly noble of him. You do not have a monopoly on altruism, my friend. Vilgefort melted my body. Detlaf found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter, regenerated me at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. Much more than that. The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something ill is afoot. Always had an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct. His tribal propensity. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, it can only mean something's upset him. Immensely. Anything specific? Some set of things that'd be likely to set him off? How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men, their world, its rules, its conventions. He's naive in a sense. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. <laughs> suggesting he's maladjusted, inventing his rage. I'm suggesting maladjustment can at times breed conflict. But is it the case this time? I cannot say, but intend to find out. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more, and all Beauclair is awash with blood. Well, we share a cause then, just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you've a contract on his head. 
Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I'll have convinced you Detlaf is no monster. Fine, all right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer they not find me here. I've makeshift quarters at Mer Lachaise Long Cemetery. We'll meet there. See you. Witcher, we flew here as fast as our courses would carry us. Yet I fear we're late all the same. Pray, where is the beast? Still investigating. About to inspect this site. Withdraw your men before they trample all over the evidence. Ahem, <clears throat> sirs. We must let the Witcher do his work. Milton's murder cannot go unoffensed. Say, sir, I was just to deliver it. Here, and thanks. No, sir, thank you. And I truly hope I'll be off surface again. Dearest. I suspect weighty affairs, rather than merely the wine festival, have drawn you to Toussaint. Perhaps you'll find time to probe a certain matter in spite of this. I recently came across the mention of one Professor Moreau, a scholar in Beauclair, who conducted research into Witcher mutations. Though the details are rather murky, as is the location of the scholar's laboratory, his journal could contain more information. It lies buried with him in his tomb. I enclose a map I found in the book I happened upon. Though less than completely legible, I trust it will prove useful nonetheless. I felt this matter could prove of some importance to you. Thus I dispatched this letter without delay. Whatever you decide, please take exceedingly good care of yourself. Your Yen. Hmm. A professor who studied Witcher mutations. Might actually be worth looking into. Avelian Bocas and Ketza. Sir! Come to me, please! Approach! My eyes were not deceived. Yet so far south. You, sir, of all folk in all your fame. Mm hmm. Me. South, in all my fame. Oh, I've heard so much. Why, when Master Dandelion tarried in Beauclair, not a day passed without him baying out a ballad in admiration of your teats. <laughs> yeah, unwelcome little habit of his. But, what can I do for you? Ah, you see, my betrothed, Francois Le Goff, vowed in my honor to bring me the head of the horrid beast they call Gratore. Couldn't have gotten you a bouquet, some sweets in a bag. Witcher, sir, you jest. A love most true demands proof through heroic deeds dedicated to the heart's captor. But alas, Francois has been gone a fortnight. Thus, I must plead with you to see what's become of him. Could you? Would you? Do my damnedest to get your fiancé back safe and sound. Just... Uh, mind telling me where to look for him? I forget you come from afar and do not know our land. They say Gratore has its lair in the caves at the foot of the Gorgon Hills. That close to the city? Telling me no bold souls have ventured out to defeat the beast? Quite the contrary. Plenty have, but none's returned. My concern is well founded. I see. All right. High time I set off. Speech. Salvation lies not in Dolmevde, but in our 
hearts. Glory be to Eldorin. Damn. Professor's journal's long gone. Guess somebody else found out about it too. Should look around, see if I can find something else. Footprints. Narrow and shallow. Somebody small, light. Woman, maybe? Wonder where they lead. Damn it, trail breaks off. Wonder if the grave robber learned more than I did. The professor certainly can't do much to help me with my search. Hmm, won't learn anything else here. Mattress sent me will have to do. Also, Epitaph mentioned both Elorin and Dolnevde, Valley of the Nine. flows through there. Must be where the valley of the Iron ones lay. Need to explore the location. Grave Robber must have found something in Moreau's tomb to activate the entry portal. Wonder what surprises this place has in store. somehow. Crossbow, maybe? Could try to hit them. Not bad. Wouldn't mind having something like that myself. Someone put a lot of thought into its design. Should look around. Gargoyle sure don't look willing to help.
be where Moreau had his lab. Preserved organs. Hope their donors weren't forced to give them up. Guessing this man didn't come here willingly. Just need to pick an entry. The 18th of Yule, year 1102. Today I begin my great life's endeavor. One greater and more significant than any I have thus far undertaken. For it relates to me personally. To myself and my son. When fifteen years passed, a beast of the forest assaulted me. A witcher came to my aid, saved my life. I could not know that for said salvation, I would in the end pay by relinquishing any say as to my own son's fate. Had I the skill to turn back time, I would have done so, and perished rather than surrender to the Witcher's my only son. But as it was, on the day when Jerome was taken, I swore an oath on my honor that I would recover my son. Today, following years of research and preparation, I have at last devised a device that allows me to study mutations. If the gods in their goodness grant me but a bit of favor, I shall find a way to reverse said mutations and restore Jerome to a normal life. So, Professor wasn't out to enhance Witcher mutations, wanted to reverse them. Wonder if he managed, and if there's anything in it for me. Observation 22. Despite applying a surfeit of toxic substances, significantly more than usual, the subject displayed no symptoms of overdosing. I believe this to be an effect of the mutations. Thus, a minor success. This mutation should allow Jerome better to tolerate toxicity. Observation number 30. The mutations do not set in at once. Curiously, they do not develop over a span of time. Rather, for a mutation to progress towards completion, the appropriate mutagen must be applied continuously. The subject does not bear this well, but I found a way to make the mutations less taxing, invasive. To the mutagen base, I add the albumin of a mutated giant centipede egg. Stored in the Glasterarium, the eggs do not develop. Remain small. The eggs themselves are a sight to behold. Mutated, they are luminescent, emitting a wondrous glow. I can only hope my addition of the albumin will produce no significant side effects. Time will tell. Observation 58. Sometimes failure is the catalyst for success. I've discovered a method by which one type of mutagen may be transmuted into another through the addition of certain ingredients. This is a great day for science. In addition, I observed that today's dose of mutagens brought the subject to the brink of death. 
He then suddenly awoke, revived, his strength renewed. Not wholly, of course, but he did in a sense come back from the edge of death. Whether this is attributable to his mutations or to pure coincidence cannot be ascertained. I must conduct further experiments. Years of experiments. Be such. Sacrifice. All for naught. I have failed to achieve my defined objective. Each mutation I applied to my subjects proved ineffective when applied to Jerome. What I meant to cure him of his witcherism, that which I meant to restore to him a normal life, only deepened his mutations, further augmented his speed and strength, rendered him yet more inhuman. It seems my son must remain a witcher forever. I have failed. The time has come to abandon this place. Return home to Lydia. She may yet deign to take me back. The contraption and mutagens I leave here. Let them wither and crumble. As did my dreams of regaining my son. Hmm. So the Professor wanted to reverse the mutation's effects. Ended up deepening them. Stroke of luck for me. Could profit from his failure. So... Professor tried to neutralize the effects of Witcher mutations. Only managed to enhance them, though. Used the albumens of giant centipede eggs as his mutagen base. Need to go on an egg hunt. the library. Mostly tomes on mutations and genetics. Mutagens might work on me if they did on his son. Well, time to 
to find out. A beast lurks in there. Right. Expected as much, cause I... Shh, quiet, before you wake it. Come, I've camped nearby. We shall talk there. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak! Name's Geralt. No crest, no motto, no plumed helmet even. I'm a witcher. Francois Le Goff, I presume. Your betrothed sent me. See, you've been gone a while, so you've got her worried. I... well, indeed, for... For... Grotore is a most fearsome beast. I must prepare properly for battle. Takes two weeks, that? I have tarried a bit, true, but the delay is done. My word I gave, thus the beast shall die. Wouldn't happen to need any help, would you? I... I don't know. After all, I did swear a solemn oath to... Deposit the beast's head at your beloved's feet. No mention of you killing it all by yourself, though. All in all, I... I suppose you're right. We must fight side by side, then. For honor! Should be hmm, strange. No sign of Gratori. Perhaps we should turn back? If there's no beast, there's no beast. Damn shame, but we tried. Not so fast. Let's take a look around. Impressive. You'd think you were in a winter garden. Children's shoes. And I've never seen a collection this grotesque.
<laughs> By my troth, the damned brute was sturdy. I, I'm grateful, Witcher. You aided me greatly. Why the challenge? Couldn't have gone after something less formidable? A werebub, for instance? Uh, why? For... For the beast must match in ferocity the very ardor of my affection, and... You're blushing, Sir Knight. Oh, it's my betrothed. The thing is, she champs at the pit to get married when we've not known one another but two years. So I vowed to slay Gratori. Thought it would buy me time to battle such a beast why it could take months. Mm -hmm. Especially at the rate you were going. High time you returned to Beauclair, brave knight. Nay, oh, nay. The head of this beast is a trifle, wholly inadequate to express the love I harbor for my betrothed. The world awaits. <laughs> To honor her, I shall cut down another, more terrible beast. Take my advice. Grab the damned head and cut the shit. You are blind to my predicament. Once I return, I will have no recourse. She'll drag me to the nearest shrine when... Shut up and listen. Crests. Scrap metal armor, swooning damsels, all that's nothing to do with hunting monsters. Witches work. Damn hard, dangerous, and thankless work that you're just not cut out for. Want to prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. You do not mince words, master. In Tucson, one might demand satisfaction upon trampled ground, or a lesser slight. Yet? There is truth in what you say, I cannot deny. I survived with my life by a hair. It is time... Time I returned home. <laughs>